Hi and welcome back to the Nordic Watch channel. I'm Anders from Finland and today we're going to go through my state of the collection which uh, it's been almost a year since last time so it's about time to go through the collection again. This time I'm going to go through every single watch briefly and I'm going to go through them in categories. This is also probably going to be the mother of all affiliate link videos but only in the description of course. Uh, it's about to be the Christmas holidays so if you're going to get a watch, I'm going to try to find a good affiliate link for you guys and uh, greatly appreciate it if you purchase one via the affiliate links. It costs nothing extra but helps the channel out a lot. Let's put these watches in their respective categories and start going through the watches. Alright, all watches in the same frame, that was not an easy task. It's always shocking to take your whole collection out and just uh, realizing how many watches you have and how many of them are just laying in the box and not being used that much. We have now made our categories, so we have our divers here to the left, five watches, uh, three Casios, I actually have a fourth one which I don't have here right now, but it's the metal version of that uh, Casio Royale. Then we have our four vintage watches here, three kind of Flieger or military style watches, and then here in the middle we have two great everyday style watches from Seiko. Why don't we start off from uh, these field and military watches and go on from there? So first off, uh, this Seiko is it? Uh, it's the Seiko SNX425. I featured it previously, and it is actually on a Seiko SNK809 bracelet. So it's not the perfect fit, but it still is a really nice, nice fit. I just tried this today, and this is kind of a predecessor to the Seiko SNK809. So it's a little bit smaller, I think it's like 35 millimeters, so it's super small. And it's kind of a funny Seiko 5 because it doesn't have the Seiko 5 emblem on the dial, which I really like. And it's a really kind of a timeless military design. And you can see that kind of a etched Seiko 5 logo there on the crystal. Really just a fun kind of small military watch. And I'll just put that on the wrist. And there we go. As you see, even on my six and a half inch wrist, this watch is pretty tiny, but really cool find. Uh, once I saw it on the forums, I just had to buy it because it looked so uh, different for a Seiko 5. And just the small size was something that I really liked. I'm not a great fan or great big fan of that uh, green dial. It's kind of a odd color, but actually with this bracelet, it works really nicely. Mm, it has the same kind of bead blasted finish as the SNK 809, which I really like. Gives it a really nice military aesthetic. All right, next up is pretty much the pride and joy of my watch collection at the moment. Uh, I bought this Zin 556A as a graduation present for myself when I graduated as a commercial pilot. Of course, in the worst possible timing, right before the pandemic hit. But anyways, this will always be in my collection as a kind of a milestone achievement and reminding me that I passed the training. And this is just the perfect pilot watch in my opinion. It's got a diameter of 38.5 millimeters, just a great size for a wrist like mine. Also, one great thing about this is also the super discreet date window. It's something that if you look at it from afar, you just don't notice it, but it's there when you need it. So that's great. One of the most legible dials also to you, no matter where you look at it, you can always read the time from this watch. Only problem with this watch, which uh, really bugs me, is that this sapphire crystal has um, anti-reflective coating on top of the sapphire. So as you can see where that beam of light is right now, it actually scratches, so you have a sapphire, but due to the fact that you have coating on the sapphire, it makes it look like the crystal is scratched. And I just don't understand why you just wouldn't put the 
coating underneath the crystal only so you don't get the scratches but other than that this uh, is a really fantastic watch I, I am yet to review this but I should get get to that when I have the time I got this on the original Zin bracelet uh, secondhand but right now I have it on this gorgeous uh, handmade leather strap which is made by a fellow Finn of mine uh, a guy that has uh, his own shop at Nordic watch traps I'll put a link in the description below but anyways he custom makes uh, leather straps you can get them in a variety of colors and dimensions and just great quality straps uh, for a really affordable price in my opinion nothing too much and I was actually really lucky and I won, won this strap in uh, Instagram um, giveaway so really happy I found it that way and I should get around to buying another strap soon and here's the Zin 556A on my six and a half inch wrist um, in my opinion just the perfect size uh, for a wrist like mine and it's pretty thin I think it's around 10 millimeters thick super legible super comfortable and just uh, go anywhere do anything kind of watch my favorite in the collection and probably gets the most of my wrist time at the moment last but not least recent purchase for me uh, really a long time I've been uh, contemplating getting a Seiko SNK 809 and I finally did I got it on the bracelet, which I now have on the Seiko SNX. Just always wanted one of these classic Seiko 5 and it's, uh, well, one of the most talked about entry-level automatics on YouTube probably and the forums and that says a lot. It's just a great watch for the money and really versatile with a variety of straps and I will be making a review of this watch. And if you compare this to the previous Seiko SNX there, uh, you can see that it is uh, substantially larger in my opinion it's still a small watch and just i think the perfect fit for a six and a half inch wrist like mine really comfortable great great watch for the money now for two great um, everyday watches from seiko in two different price categories first in the around 100 dollar or euro category we have the seiko snkl 41 which i have reviewed on the channel and go check out the review if you're interested i actually gifted this one to my girlfriend and she used it a lot in the beginning but now she's been moving on to uh, apple watch which i'm not that happy about but uh, I've, been, I've been getting a chance to wear this again more often what can i say that hasn't been said in the review already this is a fantastic watch for the price it it's just a timeless design, really elegant, super crisp and clean dial. The kind of timeless design really reminds me of a, like a Rolex Oyster Perpetual or a Datejust. It's just, well, dare I say it, pure class. And once again, as you can see, a watch that is a great fit for a slimmer wrist like mine. Um, I think this is pretty much the ideal size for an everyday watch. So it's something like, I think it's 37 millimeters in diameter. And uh, yeah, just a great fit. The bracelet on it is not fantastic. And I'm uh, really aching to buy a president style bracelet from Uncle Seiko. We'll see when I get around to it. Then uh, one of the more popular models again on YouTube. It's the Seiko Sarb 033. Uh, also a watch I haven't reviewed on the channel because I think just YouTube is so saturated with reviews about this watch but it is one of the watches that I wear the most and it's been in my collection I think for at least two years now. I have it on a Kirkstead kind of a president style bracelet from Gekoda and I would also like to buy a Uncle Seiko president style bracelet for this one because it's almost perfect but since it has the original end links uh, it kind of looks awkward with that middle middle link there but that's the only gripe i have about this bracelet every time i'm just uh, going to the office or need to grab a watch that will work in any situation this is the one i go for because it's just a timeless design uh, really clean black nice dial and it's also 
pretty robust. Yeah, I just don't see this watch leaving my collection anytime soon. Just a great classic and really love this watch. There it is on the wrist. As you can see, it's a little bit larger than the Seiko SNK L41, but still, still a great size for my wrist. Okay, next up we have my uh, Casio corner or Casio collection. And uh, actually one is missing, like I said, I have this um, Casio AE1200 in both the black color and the metal color, but uh, I don't know where I put it. <laughs> but anyways, I have this one put on a 22 millimeter NATO. If you want to uh, see how I did that, go check out my video. I think it's just a fun way to kind of mix it up a little bit. This one didn't turn out great, but I'm sure you can make a better result yourself. A little bit of a background why I have the Casio Royale at all. It's because I was avoiding getting a G-Shock for a really long time. I thought they would be really big for my wrist. So I gravitated towards these kind of um, what I thought would be smaller Casios on the wrist. But actually, since I got my G-Shock over there, um, I actually think that these sit larger on the wrist than this G-Shock does. So I'm actually going to sell both of my Casio Royale watches, but I would really like to make a review of them before I do that. But anyway, it's just a, a great everyday piece. Also something I used to use pretty much when I uh, went to the gym or running or just to do some handiwork at my parents house or something. So you don't have to worry about it if it gets banged up. It's not a big deal. And it's also pretty robust with 100 meters of water resistance. Tons of functionality for a really low price. And there it is on my wrist. And as you can see, it sits kind of large larger than the size would suggest in my opinion. I really like the kind of stealthy color scheme with that black. This NATO strap didn't turn out great, but I still think it looks better than a 18 millimeter NATO strap. So this is the Casio G-Shock DW5600BB. I think it's the all out black version with the negative kind of dial. This is the watch that got me <laughs> to drop my um, suspicions for G-Shock because I was always avo avoiding them because I thought they would be so big on my six and a half inch wrist. But when I actually tried this one, I noticed that these kind of square G-Shocks are not that big at all. Uh, this is actually the only Casio I use at the moment. I have to sell my old ones because this is the only one I use. And as you can see, I have way too many watches. Uh, but yeah, great functionality and really robust for not a lot of money. So always when I go to the gym, when I go running and uh, pretty much anything, it's my beater watch if I go do any handiwork, like I said, at my parents' house or, or anything like that, then it's G-Shock all the way. And there it is on my six and a half inch wrist. And as you can see, compared to the Casio Royale, I think this actually looks a lot smaller even though it might not be but because of the well the black dial and also that the digital screen is smaller it just looks a lot smaller on the wrist than this one does even though it might not be so it was a, all a big myth for me i was thinking i would never own a g-shock but actually i really like this one and i did make a review about it if you're interested go check it out um, really fantastic watch for not a lot of money and it pretty much renders the rest of my Casios useless so they will be going. This Casio I have also made a review about and I'll put it in a card or in the description below. It's a little bit more modern looking than its um, more retro counterparts. I think it's the A168WEM or something like that. I'll put the reference number down here. It's just a fun take on the older, more retro versions. It's a little bit more thick and it has a mineral glass instead of, uh, I think the other ones have acrylic or something. If you don't want that kind of a green retro dial, which I didn't want, I wanted this blacked out uh, screen and 
I think this is just a fantastic little Casio for your money, but I don't really use it all that much anymore when I've gotten my G-Shock. So this one is a little bit uh, larger than an F91W. So it's kind of nice because uh, they sometimes those really small Casios, you forget you have them on and it's kind of nice to have just a little bit more wrist presence but not too much so this is a great watch all right not many categories left in this uh, video but we still have my divers and then we have the vintage corner of my collection we have a vintage leona which is well it's swiss made but it it is actually a finnish brand I used to have another Leona watch from I think the 50s which I showed in my previous state of the collection video but I en actually ended up selling that one and getting this one instead because it well this was in such pristine condition it's really stunning uh, I'm not really sure how old this watch is but it's uh, probably from the 60s or 70s I'd say and um, it's a hand-wound watch, just a timeless kind of a dress watch and I just had to get it because it costs under 100 euros so that was just a great deal. Really like the small seconds here at the 6 o'clock. I have it on this great color rib strap which I love and it's, I think it's just really cool to have uh, this kind of a, a Finnish brand. I think it's something that Finnish watch enthusiasts kind of uh, appreciate because it does have a really cool history and it's still alive and well the brand and actually doing a collaboration with uh, renowned watchmaker Kari Voutilainen at the moment. Like many of the previous watches the same kind of theme is recurring so uh, pretty small watch I think this is 36 millimeters or something just a fantastic size for a wrist like mine. I'm really gravitating towards smaller watches and this is why I think they all look absolutely fantastic on my wrist and this one being no exception. Just super comfortable, slides under the cuff nicely and a really clean kind of dress watch with also a cool finish history. Um, this vintage Tissot I have uh, shown you earlier also. I got this from my father, he's never really been a, a watch person per se. I'm not actually sure if this is even genuine, it could just as well be kind of a fake watch, I have no idea and I haven't changed the battery on this one, but it just has some sentimental value and uh, also cool to have a, go I think it's a gold plated watch in the collection, but I have to say I, I do never wear, th wear this, but I'm also not going to sell it so and there it is on the wrist really slim slender and elegant it's a cool watch and it means a lot to me so All right next up is uh, a watch I am really happy that I found one beautiful day on the forums or the Facebook group and it's a vintage Creedor and I just uh, I didn't know that vintage Creedors were so affordable I got this for under 200 euros I think um, the batteries run out, I should go and change that. Kind of a really cool Cartier kind of design. It reminds me of the Cartier Santos and that's a watch that I would sometime love to have either the Santos or a Cartier tank. I actually got this one in order to see if I would like the design and actually buy one at some point. And this is a super, super thin watch. It's like three, three millimeters thick. So it's just about as thick as the bracelet. And I ended up being really lucky because they, this one came with no extra links and the bracelet is just like perfect for my wrist. So I guess that was meant to be. Really light champagne colored dial and with those gold hands and indices. Also the crown kind of reminds me of Cartier with that, well I don't know what that is but it's some black onyx or something. My favorite part about this watch is the bracelet which also really reminds me of a Santos and I think this clasp is just really cool with that gold 
typed Creedor or engraved Creedor there. Really cool. And there it is on my wrist and I, <laughs> I'm not joking, it actually was sold to me exactly in this configuration. So it's like the perfect fit for my wrist. It doesn't have any extra links and I have no idea how I would remove any links. So it's just the perfect fit. And this is by far the thinnest watch I've ed ever had and it's super comfortable with a shirt. And uh, I'm looking forward to wearing this with a suit many times in the future. This is a Seiko Seahorse. I think it's from the 70s. Um, absolutely beautiful gray dial. And I bought this one because of the great looking Beads of Rice bracelet. I'm kind of frustrated that I still haven't gotten the bracelet shortened because I have actually no idea how to do it myself. And I'm afraid to try, but it is a little bit long for me still. Anyways, this watch kind of reminds me of um, like vintage Omegas from the 70s and I just really love this bracelet and it's super comfortable. Uh, and it's just the timeless Seiko kind of design on the dial also. And for its age, I think it has some really nice details, like the hands are really nicely finished. And there it is on my wrist. Again, a slim, small watch for my slim, small wrist. And again, I think this is a great fit for my wrist. Just love the way that uh, Beats of Rice bracelet looks. And I have to go get it shortened ASAP because I really want to get around to wearing this watch also. Just amazing what you can get with like 150 euros when you're go going vintage. All right, finally the final category of this video and it is my dive watch collection at the moment. A uh, couple of these watches are familiar to you from before. If you watched my uh, collection videos, we have the timeless classic, the Seiko SKX009, which is the Pepsi version on the classic Jubilee bracelet, which everyone loves to hate and I absolutely love. Uh, what's there to say about it that hasn't been said? Just the classic Seiko Diver and one of my favorite watches to wear for summer. Really nice pop of color, really recognizable and you can always tell that uh, if you're seeing someone wearing an SKX you know they're somewhat into watches probably. I think the SKX has a diameter of like 42 or 43 millimeters but due to a short lug to lug distance, it's actually really wearable for a smaller wrist like mine also. And it's one of the more comfortable divers that I've had. And also a watch that will be in my collection for a long time, probably I don't see any reason to let this one go. Another diver that might be familiar to you from before from my channel, is the Seiko SNZF-17 aka the Seiko Sea Urchin. Uh, the first automatic watch that I ever bought and also the first ever watch I made a YouTube video about. It's my first ever video. It's a terrible video to look at but if you want to you can go check it out. I hope that I have made some progress in content creation since then. But yeah, this is a great starter piece for a watch. Uh, it's a little bit larger than the Seiko SKX, but it is a little bit more affordable also, which is why I went for this one back in the day. And some really nice details, I think, on this dial for the price, having that negative day and date wheel or wheels and those kind of, I think those are applied indices. It's kind of reminiscent of a Rolex Submariner, but it still has its own identity and it's really recognizable, in my opinion. I don't wear it that often anymore, but since it's my first ever watch that I bought for myself, I don't think I'm ever selling this one. It's just going to be kind of a memory piece in my collection. And there it is on my six and a half inch wrist. And this is really on the borderline of being a little bit too large for my wrist, but it's still 
manageable. On its own bracelet, it wears a little bit smaller than on a NATO, which makes it rise up from the wrist like that. But I just think this is a really cool kind of a tool watch. And every time I wear this, it takes me back to when I was super into watches, just had gotten into the hobby. And all I did was watch YouTube videos and search for watches online every day. Okay, three watches left and uh, maybe we should talk about the elephant in the room. So that's the Orient M-Force. Uh, this one is kind of a combo breaker in this video because every other watch I've had is pretty much a watch that is a good watch for a smaller wrist. But this is one that I can guarantee you that is made for a larger wrist. And actually this watch was sent in for me for review and I got to keep it afterwards and I have made an unboxing video of this watch go check it out if you're interested and I will be making a full comprehensive review later this is a Orient's kind of a real beast watch I think the price point is around three to five hundred dollars or euros and I have to say that it's a really nice watch for the money it comes with a sapphire crystal 200 meters of water resistance, it's an ISO certified diver. The case kind of reminds me of the Oris Aquis, but I really like the bezel on this one, I like the numbers which are engraved in this uh, metal uh, bezel, and really like the skeletonized hands and the yellow seconds hand. It's a real robust watch and uh, something different, and it's still a really cool watch, but it's a little bit large for my wrist. I'll show you what I mean. I think the diameter is like 45 millimeters or something, so it's huge. But when I first put this on my wrist, I was actually surprised that it wasn't larger than this. I can actually wear this. And keep in mind that when you see this on camera, it always looks a little bit larger than it actually does in person. Super heavy watch, it weighs like 200 grams, even when the bracelet is shortened. Still, there's something really cool and robust about this watch, and it's super legible and has really super bright loom also. Two watches left, and let's go with the Steinhardt Ocean 139 with the ceramic bezel. I always wanted to try a Steinhardt. I always read about the love and the hate from different sources and wanted to make my own conclusions about the brand and the watches. And I have to say, this watch is super impressive. It way exceeded my expectations. Like the, the bezel is really crisp and just aligns perfectly. The loom is great. The movement is great. This one, I think, has an ETA movement. Oops. And then also the proportions are fantastic on this watch. And then we have substantial anti-reflective coating on the crystal. It's sapphire. And what more is there to say? 300 meters water resistant. This thing is a super like <laughs> nice watch for the money. I know people don't like that it's a Rolex Submariner homage, but so are also many other watches, and I just think that the 39 millimeter size on this watch uh, gives it some great proportions, and it just looks fantastic. I think this might even stay in my collection for a long time. As you probably noticed, my collection changes a lot. There are a lot of watches that come and go, and then there are a few ones that uh, just stay in my collection for a longer time and I'm not sure but this might be one of the watches that will stay in my collection because it's actually really great and there it is and just the perfect size diver for my six and a half inch wrist and I love the way that uh, ceramic bezel shines and kind of looks like Athena sometimes I don't know if I can uh, really express <laughs> myself well but to me, it sometimes looks like the bezel would be like faded, even though it's just glossy. Fantastic bracelet also tapers down really nicely to the clasp. I'm looking forward to making a review about this watch. And last but not least, my uh, pretty much my newest watch 
purchase or not actually a purchase it was a trade uh it's my first ever modern certina watch and it's the certina ds action diver 38 millimeter model which is a great size this one actually came into my collection with a series of trades first i had the seiko sumo which i have reviewed uh, I traded that for the Yema Flygraph, which is my previous um, review video. And then somebody um, offered to trade this watch for the Yema. And of course I said yes, because I always like to try new watches. So the Yema had to go. This one came instead. And also a great size diver for a smaller wrist. 38 millimeters in diameter and um, this one comes with the Powermatic 80 movement so 80 hours of power reserve which is fantastic one thing I have to say that I am disappointed about because the MSRP of this watch is like almost $800 so you would really expect the quality control to be good but I have to say the Bezel does not align at the 12 o'clock, which is kind of uh, sad. And also the loom pip is, as you can see, not perfectly centered on the triangle. Uh, that's just disappointing because it's a pretty expensive watch and you would expect it to be better. Just like the Steinhardt, this is a bang on size for a diver for my wrist really like it and uh, I prefer this size to a 40 millimeter or above 40 millimeter dive watch. This is just a perfect size for a diver and I'm really happy to see that many watch manufacturers are going back to smaller uh, sizes and it's something that's really welcome if you ask me. Whew. That's all of the watches for you today. Kind of a marathon. I bet this one will be a pretty long episode. Uh, if you have any questions about these watches, go ahead and ask them in the comment section. I always answer my comments uh, because I don't, I didn't have really that much time to go through each watch because there are so many of them. Uh, just kind of a brief introduction to the watches and I have reviewed many of these so go and check them out if you're interested in my uh, previous videos. Go check me out on Instagram at Nordic Watch Channel if you're interested. And uh, yeah, I'll be posting a lot of affiliate links underneath this video in the description. Uh, really appreciate it if you go and get your holiday watches from those links. Helps the channel out a lot. Yeah, this has been Anders from Finland and the Nordic Watch Channel. And thanks for watching and I will see you in a future video. Happy holidays. Bye bye.